Okay. Well, um, the last speaker this afternoon is uh, Giacomo Roberti from Northumbria University, and he's going to speak about numerical spectral synthesis of soliton and breather gases. Okay, thank you for the introduction, and thank you for being here. And also like to thank the organizer uh, of the workshop and the Institute for inviting me, and also Simon Foundation for funds my stay here. Actually. So this is a joint work with uh, Thibaut Congi, uh, Gennady Else, Farandou, Pierre Sure, and Alex Sorvis. And okay, it's the last talk of the day. There will be a lot of pictures. I hope you're <laughs> happy. Uh, so the, um, the work I'm going to present is actually the uh, generation and creation of uh, soliton gas uh, numerically, what we can do and where are and actually where 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 we want to start is of course the definition of soliton gas introduced by Zakharov as an ensemble of interacting soliton with uh, randomly distributed velocity, uh, amplitude, and position. This was considered in the KDV uh, for the KDV system in a diluted um, setup. Uh, later, this has been uh, generalized to the dense soliton gas for KDV by Gennady in a uh, uh, paper in 2003, and later uh, for the nonlinear Schrodinger kind of equation by Gennady and Alex uh, uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, as we saw before by the talk by Alex, uh, we can derive, uh, given the proper thermodyn thermodynamic limit uh, for the um, uh, finite gap uh, spectrum, uh, where we shrink uh, the, the bands in a proper way, we can obtain some nonlinear uh, dispersion relation. And with some manipulation, we can get uh, a continuity equation and an equation of state. The key uh, function that describe our, our system, our soliton gas in this context is what we call density of state that represent the density of soliton, both in the spectral plane and on uh, the physical space, actually. And here I report uh, all the equations are for the KDV case, where I'm, uh, the talk will be mostly focused on this. And at the end, I will say a couple of words also for NLS and uh, breeder, uh, also breeder gas for NLS. Uh, other than the uh, continuity equation, we have an equation of state that describe uh, the effective velocity that a tracer, a soliton that belongs to the gas will uh, uh, experience due to the interaction of the, with the other solitons. Uh, so, oh, sorry. So these uh, equations are actually not easy to solve for a generic case and what we have as we saw before, we have a specific limit where our the scaling function uh, sigma go to zero, for example, or goes to infinity. For goes to infinity, we'll end up with a diluted gas. Instead, in the limit for sigma going to zero, we'll have um, a dense soliton gas because we have essentially the interacting term, that is the integral term, will, will be dominant in our system. Uh, in this case, as we said, we call it soliton gas. We, we then soliton gas and condensate actually, because it's the densest gas that we can actually obtain. An analogous description has been given by uh, Girotti and uh, collaborator as the regular gas, deterministic gas, because in some sense we kill all the randomness and we have an object that is as dense as it can be. And in the simplest case, we can solve these equations. We obtain a genus zero solution that has been also uh, shown before by Thibault, as is the vial distribution. So uh, as we said, uh, there are um, different work. There is the work by Gennady and Alex, where the soliton gas is obtained in a final gap setup. But we saw also the talk by Ken and Tamara and, and and so on, where they obtain it through primitive potential, uh, Riemann-Hilbert problem, and so on. And what we are in, in uh, work by Bob Jenkins that is trying to is uh, essentially showing the convergence of these different approaches. 
So, but what we want to do here is generate numerically this object, and to do so, we'll, uh, um, we, we will use an n soliton solution approximation that we, we want to show that in the limit for n big enough, we have quite a nice realization of a soliton graph. But before doing so, we introduce again the model. We are working on the KDV equation written here with uh, the associated scattering problem. And here I write it uh, in two different uh, versions with uh, opposite side, uh, opposite sign in front of the nonlinearity. This is for um, a simplified algorithm and actually does not introduce uh, a lot of problem because uh, a solution of one of the equation can be simply mapped to the other changing the sign. Uh, as we know, this kind of uh, system allowed the presence of uh, soliton solutions associated with a discrete spectrum point. And uh, here is uh, the, our classical soliton solution for KDV. And what we want to do is given a set of uh, discrete point of the spectrum, eta i, uh, generated the n soliton solution associated with this spectrum. And to do so, we rely on the Darbu transformation that is an iterative method to generate a hierarchy of solution. And this does not act uh, uh, directly on the solution of the equation, but actually acts on the your solution associated to the solution itself. So given a solution to our system, we can, if we put it in the scattering problem and we, we obtain the just solution, we can apply this Darbu transformation to add essentially a soliton to our solution. And from the new YOS solution, we can then recover the actual potential that solves the KDV equation. So to do so, we follow an algorithm um, actually from the 88 by Wang. And uh, our starting point, uh, our initial condition from which we start in uh, pile up, piling up uh, the different soliton is uh, the void solution. And we use this kind of seed solution because it's simple and we can obtain, we know everything about it. When I say we know everything about it, I mean, we can write explicitly the your solution. And, and so starting from this point, we can actually add the different object. So then we give a set of uh, soliton parameters, eta and b. B are actually the norming constant. I will, I will say a few words later about it. And we have to order them uh, smallest to biggest. And then we have a set of recursive equations that uh, actually are our Darbu transformation, where the Darbu transformation has this form. And Pn here is a projector, uh, uh, projection matrix. And P and the your solution will be, in this case, uh, written for the KDV equation, but there will be uh, different for different system for NLS will be slightly different. So at this point, uh, once you have uh, uh, the, the projector matrix, we can actually build the next uh, uh, solution to our equation. And as I said before, we using these uh, together this um, true KDV equation with opposite sign, we will map a solution of one equation to the solution of the other, but then we can recover just changing the sign. So here, uh, the norming constant, uh, as uh, actually Thibault uh, referred before, as linked to, our, to, to the phase, to the position of our soliton. If we have only one soliton, actually this X naught will be the exact solution, the exact center of our soliton. But when we start adding a lot of soliton, this is not anymore true, but we can imagine it's like an average position between the two asymptotic stage when the soliton are well ordered at minus infinity, tallest to smallest, so fastest to slowest, and at T plus minus T, plus infinity or their smallest to fastest. Uh, the second point uh, I should uh, I should spend some word is the fact that we are adding a lot of poles on each iteration. We are adding a new pole in our equation and we are summing and uh, subtracting a very big exponential and small exponential. And so we have a round of error that they start adding up. And actually we can show that after few iterations, just 
10 soliton, we encounter in some uh, clearly non-physical object because this round of error has become predominant. To solve this problem, we uh, follow the, uh, the implementation of multi-precision library introduced by Gelasha Gafonsef in the work they did in 2018, where they write the algorithm to generate soliton and soliton solution for the KDV, no, for the NLS focusing NLS equation. And as we can see, adding uh, uh, this multi-precision library, we can choose the accuracy of our number. We go well above, uh, well beyond the, the double precision, and we can recover an actually physical object. And as observation, we, we can we, we see that uh, essentially we need uh, a number of uh, digits of precision that's uh, uh, about 1.5 the number of soliton that we have in the system. So let's see what we can build uh, with this machinery. As we said before, the easiest uh, condensate that we introduce is the Geno Zero condensate, where the um, density of state is the wide distribution. Given the, the distribution of our eigenvalue of our scattering problem, uh, scattering point, we can actually reverse and get the position, an exact deterministic position of our uh, scattering data that are uh, distributed according to this uh, uh, PDF. And then we fix uh, the, the phases, essentially the position all at the same point, because in some sense we want to, const to focus them and concentrate them as much as we can. And what we build, what we generate is a box like uh, uh, potential. We have some uh, uh, boundary, uh, some border effect, but if we focus at the center, so here is going just between minus 50 and 50, and look at the scale uh, is very small. We have five, 10 minus three. Uh, here we have in red, we have the constant solution because actually we can show that uh, for the genus one condensate, this is with probability one, uh, the constant solution of the KDV equation. And here we reported two different solution, one for uh, 100 soliton and 200 soliton. And if we look at the error, we can see that the error is going down quite fast, in particular at the center of our uh, object. And if we actually just focus to the center and we check the error, the absolute error between our, uh, our object and the constant solution, we see that the error goes down quite fast as n, one over n square, and is actually faster than what has been observed for NLS uh, by Gelash and co-author, where it's going uh, to the constant solution as 1 over the square root of n. OK. So um, the time in our, in our construction is just a parameter. So instead of generating our solution at time equals 0, we can actually evolve it, but without using a solver, and just generate the solution another time. And so if we started again, like uh, 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 the box at t equals zero, we have essentially two ribbon problem. And if you let it evolve, we will generate uh, a dispersive shock wave and a rarefaction wave. And here, just to highlight that this is generated just as super nonlinear superposition of soliton. There is no evolution of uh, uh, KDV in uh, standard way. Uh, another thing that we can do is actually slightly dilute uh, these objects that we generate. And so in our uh, density of state, we introduce a dilution parameter C. As we said before, the density of state represents both the density in the spectral than in the physical space. So if we put uh, a different uh, uh, spe special physical density, we obtain again the same distribution for the, our uh, spectral data. But then uh, the norming constant will be no more, uh, they won't be anymore just all in the same point, but we will have a support and not zero support. And actually we can uh, uh, relate the uh, dilution factor with the size of the support where we distribute the, our initial phases. And what we generate is we lose the, co the coherence of our structure and we have the generation of a lot of many oscillation. And here I just want to point out that the um, uh, 
uh, dilution factor is actually very small, it's 3%. Uh, another uh, feature that we can observe is that actually looking at uh, our equation of state, we can uh, observe that even if the soliton have only positive velocity, given the, the interaction in a very dense uh, gas, we can observe uh, effective velocity that are negative. And okay, here, uh, of course, we don't see the, the soliton itself because it's mixed in the, in the soup of soliton interacting, but we can see is a trace, a lighter trace due to the interaction of the back, uh, back flowing soliton. And here we are still in the making on trying to compare this with the analytical formula, but it's like kind of hard because we need to be able to follow this soliton out of the, our system. And then, so we can know the spectral parameter and guess what is the, the, the velocity inside the, the, the gas. Uh, here we, we just reporting a comparison between the dynamics and evolution of the uh, condensate when the dilution parameter is one and the actual diluted condensate. As you can see, the, the initial condition are they, they are similar, but in the uh, diluted case, we have uh, this uh, randomness uh, that's breaking the coherence. Then we have the generational uh, later time of the dispersive shock wave and the rarefaction wave on one side. And we can still uh, recover and observe uh, a random version of the same feature in the case of the diluted uh, uh, condensate. And then if we let it evolve at uh, as asymptotic time, here is not yet fully asymptotic, but we, we will have the, the, the soliton will well separate and they will order smallest to tallest and the same for the uh, diluted case. So this was for the genus zero. Actually, what we can do is uh, derive solution of higher genus. So we have a genus one condensate that we can conjecture that is uh, actually a conoidal wave. And uh, here we have the density of state, uh, clearly is slightly more complicated. And if we plot it again, we can generate uh, and we have some border effect again, but in the center, we can observe something that's really look like a conoidal wave. And actually, if we look at comparison with a conoidal wave solution with the given parameter, here you don't even see that there is a difference. There are perfectly overlap. One is would be red and the other black, but they are one over the other. And if you look at the error, again, is going down with the increase in the number of soliton in our uh, solution. And again, we can compare the two uh, evolution for a uh, condensate uh, and uh, the diluted one. Uh, in this case, again, we have for t equals zero, we have the, uh, in the case of the diluted one, we can still in this case, maybe observe uh, a, a trace of the uh, coherent structure of the conoidal wave, but there is now some randomness. Then at the intermediate time, we can see actually the formation of different uh, object, uh, dispersive shock wave, but it now is uh, linked to the conoidal wave. On the other side, we have a, a rarefaction wave, a plateau, and in the center, actually, there is a, a modulated genus two solution of the KDV equation. And then if we let it evolve again for asymptotic time, at some point, the two family of the of the of soliton that compose our gas will separate due to the the gap in velocity that exists, and we have essentially one family corresponding to the lower band of the gas, and another family corresponding to the top band of our uh, spectrum. Uh, actually, we can generate higher order genus. We can go to genus two condensate. In this case we have a two-phase solution of the uh, KDV equation, and we use, um, uh, we, we generate actually the two-phase so, two solution using a trace formula and Dubrovin uh, equation to obtain uh, a comparison. And also in this case, we observe the convergence of our result to the 
to the condensate. Okay, this was all for the KDV. I will say just a few words for the NLS. So we're in for the NLS question. A question we can generate both soliton and breeder gas. Do what does mean? So we start from the equation. In this case, we have complex uh, uh, spectrum. And if we start from our seed solution that is zero, uh, and we add the scattering data, we add in the soliton, we generate a soliton gas is where the your solution, as I said, is slightly different as before. And here the phases, the norming constant, have an additional uh, degree of freedom that is an overall phase. But instead of starting from the zero background, we could actually start from a non-zero background. The Yoss solution take a different form. And in this case, we have what we call a breeder gas. So we have the background that represent our um, uh, branch cut uh, between uh, zero and I, and then we add on top of these different uh, soliton. And so for the case of soliton gas, uh, Thibault already talked about it uh, uh, before. Uh, there is this work uh, by Gelash and Kotor where they managed to model the nonlinear stage of modulation and instability, the asymptotic stage of non modulation and instability using a uh, genus zero condensate for the focusing KDB NLS equation. And instead for the breeder gas, I will uh, just show some picture. Here is uh, some picture taken by our paper where we, we just generate different family, different type of, uh, of gases. Uh, we have a generic gas composed by um, a series of uh, interacting Tajiri Watanabe, that is more generic breeder that you can create. And then we have different instead, if we focus in some uh, position our, our uh, scattering data, we can recover something that we call peregrine gas and so on, where uh, essentially the uh, core element of our gas are the rational so solution of the um, NLS equation. And here, uh, we our algorithm does not allow to um, insert all the poles in the same point. So we need to distribute them on some uh, uh, support that we try to do as small as we can. And we observe, uh, uh, as you can see, for example, for the MDF breeder, there are a series of uh, <clears throat> uh, of uh, the, the core element is uh, our ACMEDF breeder distributed uh, random on a certain domain. And we use these uh, to uh, verify and, uh, some, um, and test some uh, analytical prediction from the work uh, by Gennady on uh, spectral theory for the uh, NLS equation. So, okay, I, so to conclude, I will just to recap uh, what uh, I'll show you. So first uh, I introduced and I presented an efficient and reliable algorithm to generate uh, n soliton solution for the KDV equation. Then we do some co we did some comparison between our uh, n soliton solution and the uh, condensate and multi-phase solution of the KDV. And then we show also some construction of breeder and soliton gases for the NLS equation. Uh, as a future work, we can improve the algorithm. Actually, there is a, a, a more efficient algorithm uh, presented by Prince and co-author uh, where they use uh, a technique that where instead of using a one-fold cram transform, so what's called a double transformation, so adding one pole at the time, they are able to add two soliton at the time, and then they, cho they choose a different base for the your solution. And in this way, they, they manage to essentially postpone the implementation of multi, of a multi precision library. And this is a thing that I want to do. And following, there are also try to implement the algorithm. There are different papers for other no, other integrable system, sign Gordon, MKNDV, and so on. And or try to develop different uh, approach to generate the soliton gas. The thing that I was talking, we were talking with uh, Ken McLaughlin. 
So if with this, uh, I will thank you for your attention. And, uh, and since there is time, maybe there is a couple of video of the actual dynamic evolution of genus zero, of uh, genus one, and another genus one. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Are there are there any questions? How many times are you going to make me run over there? <laughs> yeah, so can you generate um, not condensate but dense soliton gas with kind of arbitrary initial distribution in space? Next. Uh, so we we it's one thing that we want to try to do, but it's kind of hard because uh, uh, I mean these are very peculiar objects. Yes. Where we if we keep adding soliton, the density doesn't change. But yeah. if we start uh, choosing maybe not uniform distribution, it yeah. won't be so straightforward. Other questions. To compute the like n soliton solution, have you tried just solving the discrete Riemann Hilbert problem? Sorry? Have you thought about using the discrete Riemann Hilbert problem? Uh, no, that? it's uh, actually what uh, we were talking about with Ken. Okay. So he had some idea to. Yeah, it can be fairly well conditioned. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I have a question just out of ignorance. I mean, if if you would do the same initial condition, and now you would use some, uh, 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 I mean, solver for for PDEs, you know, I mean, rather than looking at the exact solution, yeah. I mean, would sort of numerically generate. Uh, I mean, how well would you do? Uh, so uh, for KDV, uh, I I don't know, we didn't try, but for example, for NNS, uh, be able to generate it. Uh, um, at any time time step we want it's very powerful in the context of no zero background because we can avoid the, the modulation and instability so if we uh, if i start with one of these uh, and i generate the initial condition and then i put it on an ls solver there will be modulation and instability and actually i won't be able to observe this dynamic instead in this case we can actually observe the dynamic other questions Maybe I can just ask a quick question. Yeah. So, uh, so in your in your process, when you did the dilute the dilution of yeah. the gas, you took away some of the solitons like that. Uh, is no, that what, is that what's going on? Or no, when I do the dilution, uh, let's go in this case. Essentially, the norming constant. Yes. So the phase are not all at the same point. In this case, we put all x naught to zero, mm -hmm. so they are all in some sense focusing the same place. Instead, when we do the, the diluted, now we distribute them uniformly on some support. I see. Okay. So that's explaining, for example, you get the roughness, but also the boundaries between the domains seem to be yeah. moving, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's thank uh, Giacomo and all the speakers for this afternoon. So, uh, and since uh, it's the last talk of the day, uh, I know we stop the... Because you had another video. I have another uh, video. <laughs> I've been pushed to it. And if you can plug the audio of the of the computer. I need to I need to Okay. Okay. So if you are a fan of uh, Doctor Who and uh, Goran Bregovic. What's that smell? Soliton gas. Gas.
Now, now I understand why you left a little time at the end. <laughs> Thank you.